Hi and welcome to the Adam Shop channel on YouTube. I'm your host Mohammad Azam with another screencast. Now in this screencast I'm going to show you how you can persist some information in your on your hardware in the directories on your iPhone. Um, so we're going to start with saving a small amount of data in the user NS user defaults and then I'm going to show you where that data actually gets saved. So I'm just going to create a very uh, simple and I think we have already covered that in the, one of the previous tutorials uh, NS user defaults and it allows you to create the key value pairs and then you can save these key value pairs okay uh, so let's actually do that set the value I'm just gonna say John for key um, name all right And um, that's pretty much it, what I'm going to do, right? So if I run it, and let me pull this thing over here, uh, it doesn't have any interface. So if I run, you will just see a white screen, okay? And of course, uh, the, comp the debugger, which keeps popping out now. Um, so that's pretty much what you, what you see right now, okay? And there's nothing on the debugger over, over here also, okay? Um, let me see, and let me also show you how you can close a debugger that keeps pop popping up. Uh, run on pauses and run on start. I think you have to do uh, this tab, and that's pretty much it. So after I ran this, it created a plist file. So if I go on my directory where I'm running this, and if you search for this, you'll see that there's a plist file created inside the preferences. And you have to remember that there are certain folders in your iPhone structure that will get um, backed up, okay? And these folders also includes the uh, preferences folder, and these folders includes the documents directory or documents folder. And anything and everything inside the documents directory gets uh, backed up to the iCloud or just backed up to your own computer when you are syncing with the iTunes or when you're actually backing it up then the iTunes will actually back it up to the iCloud or whatever you have uh, you know indicated. So now we can see that there's a file it's called uh, com.highencoding.demo something.plist and this is a new file that has been created so let's try to open this file and see and this file got created when we ran this our uh, NS user defaults line. So if I run this, uh, this window pops up and it clearly shows that the name is a type of string and the value is John, which we just entered over here in our uh, NS user defaults. Okay, sometimes you do want to create or do you, do you do want to store uh, basically a key value but uh, the whole object. Okay, and um, this you can do this, but there's no really relationship a good relationship between uh, John and if I enter something else. Now it will only be stored as a key value and key value. And if I need to get it back again, I need to get individual values back. So there is another way, and it's called archiving the objects. Uh, I created a class called customer, and you can you can see the uh, NS object in, inherits from NS object, but it is using the NS coding also. So it you know it adheres to the NS coding interface, and it basically uses the init with coder and encode with coder methods. So encode with coder will actually encode whatever the properties you specify using a key value structure. So this is a value, self.firstName, and for key, is this is the key. And for key last name, encode the value last name. Um, both these methods, initWithCoder and encodeWithCoder, they are basically fired using the uh, NSKeyed archiver and NSKeyed unarchiver, which we'll see later. But init with coder basically will return you uh, the values or the whole object populated with the save values in your iPhone device. Okay, and it will save a file uh, and store the values, basically serialize the values 
of your customer object, uh, like the first name and last name, store those values in that file, and then when you're doing init with coder, it retrieves those values and get it back to you, creating the complete object. So let's go ahead and do that. The first thing that we need, and let me actually show you what we're going to do. NS, if you check out the NS keyed archiver, and two arguments it has, archive root object, which will be our customer object, and to file. So you need to store that file somewhere that is backed up. Depending on your condition, most probably you do want to back up this file when the user is backing up to iTunes, you want to persist it. Um, so the good idea will be to store it in the document folder. So let's actually do that. So I'm just going to say over here, NS array, and I would say documents path, and then we have uh, NS search paths, NS uh, document directory, and then NS user domain mask, expand tilde, yes. And then from the uh, document directory, we can simply get the path by saying documents path uh, object with index and there's only one document directory on the iPhone iPad device so you can simply easily say object at index 0 and it will give you that directory uh, you do need to get some file name to give some file name to the uh, to the file that you want to save and you can say you can basically write anything you want I'm just saying going to say customers dot data and after you've done that you can simply say NS key archiver archive root object and you can archive customer which uh, actually doesn't uh, right now does not exist but we are going to create customer right over here customer customer equal to customer okay and we can at this point we can simply assign the value to customer and this is also a very good way of uh, storing the levels. If you're building a game, then you can store the levels of your game inside a file. And then uh, it's a very small amount of storage. Um, and then you can store it and then retrieve it. And as the user progresses, you can update this file or rewrite this file. So here we go. So we have uh, assigned these values like John and Doe. Uh, our file will be customers.data. And uh, let's run it and see what happens. So our interface, as I said, uh, doesn't really have anything. So let's go over to our terminal and find the documents directory. Okay, so we are going to go into the documents directory and you see that there is a file called customers.data if I try to open this file, if I say open a and then if I try to open it in TextMate, let's see what happens. So it's all basically gibberish data uh, and you cannot really read it, but uh, let me try another way. Oops. If I try this, no application. So there's no application that actually knows how to open the customers.data file. Okay. Um, what we can do is we can unarchive, so we can say ns unarchive and and then we can have uh, unarchive with file and then we can give the same path. Now when you unarchive the the file it will return you what? It will return you an object. So we can expect an object over here we can say customer. Actually, uh, we already have the customer object. So I'm just going to remove these two lines. And just going to say customer equal to customer. We're going to cast it out. Okay. And in the end, you can try to print it out. NS log. And... Um, customer dot first name and let's run it 
So this will have nothing, but if I go over here, you'll see that John is printed on the screen. So this basically means that it went to that file, the data file, the data extension is that what we give, and it extracted or deserialized everything that was written in that file, and it came over here, and uh, it it basically matched up the f the key value, key value, key value to the object itself, which is a customer object, and it has the same uh, properties names. So that got matched up correctly, and then it displayed the first name. So it's a good, uh, it's you know, it's it's good that we know that we can archive or uh, we can serialize these objects into these files, into the data files, and uh, if you want very small amount of storage just to save some of the uh, preferences, if you want to store the levels of your game. Uh, this might be a very good technique on doing so. Hope you like this video. Thank you very much and stay tuned for more.